chapter 5.1, exercise 1 through 4, page 451. <clears throat> We're dealing with identities here in chapter 5.1. And this set of problems, we're going to do the odd number problems here, 1 and 3, and exercise 1 through 4, evaluate without using a calculator. So this calculator we have right here, not going to use it on this exercise. Uh, use the Pythagorean identities rather than reference triangles. And a reference triangle, we would, let's go this way, reference triangle, we would use using a unit circle. So we'd have some kind of of tangents, three fourths, we would draw this, set, find a sine and a cosine, and use that. But we're not going to do this with the unit circle. We're going to use the Pythagorean identities instead. And here are the Pythagorean identities. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. 1 plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. And 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. I'm going to Add in a list of some additional identities that are going to be very helpful to us here and elsewhere. And that first one is going to be the tangent identity, which we write tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. And we're going to have the cotangent identity, which is cotangent theta. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so we're simply going to have cosine theta over sine theta. And then we're going to have the other reciprocal identities. The secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So secant theta equals 1 over cosine theta. And if secant theta is 1 over cosine theta, then cosine theta is going to be what? 1 over secant theta. And then we have the uh, cosecant, which we abbreviate CSC. CSC, C, cosecant theta, equals 1 over sine theta. And uh, sine theta is going to be equal to 1 over cosecant theta. Okay, so we're going to use some of these identities as well in this set. Okay, going back. To problem one, find the oops. Problem one, find sine theta and cosine theta if tangent theta equals three fourths and sine theta is greater than zero. And going back to our unit circle, we have sine theta is greater than zero, meaning that sine theta, if we look at uh, 16 points or unit circle, sine theta greater than zero is going to be up here in quadrants 1 and 2, and we say if tangent theta is 3 fourths, well in the unit circle, uh, all, the acronym we used to remember in my advice, all students in quadrant 2, students take in quadrant 3, calculus. So all trigonometric ratios are positive in quadrant 1, sine is, po is positive in quadrant 2, tangent is positive in quadrant 3, and cosine is positive in quadrant four. <clears throat> so that's going to help us when we do this later. Now, what we're going to use, we have, we're starting out, we're given tangent theta equals three fourths. So we're going to be using this identity right here. One plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. That's going to be the first one we use. And going back to problem one, we write this out. One plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta. And we know what tangent theta is, right? 3 fourths. So we can replace tangent uh, theta with 3 fourths. So we get 1 plus the fraction 3 over 4. And we're squaring the whole fraction, replacing tan theta, equals secant squared theta. And squaring 3 fourths, uh, 3 squared in the numerator is 9, and 4 squared in the denominator is 16, and 1 plus 9 sixteenths equals secant squared theta. 
and we need a common denominator to add this 1 and this 9 sixteenths. How many sixteenths are there in 1? Well, 16 sixteenths. So 16 sixteenths plus 9 sixteenths is equal to secant squared theta. And secant squared theta, where this 2 is, this is just notation for this, for squaring the whole thing. All right. And what's 16 plus 9? 25. So 25 sixteenths is equal to secant squared theta. Now, to solve for secant theta, we need to take the square root of both sides. And so if we take the square root of both sides of this equation, we're going to bring the result up here to work below from up here. And we get secant theta is equal to, now this is important, we take the square root of something, plus or minus the square root of, what's the square root of 25? That's going to be 5. And what's the square root of 16 in the denominator? That's going to be 4. So we have 5 fourths. Now, is this thing going to be plus or minus? Well, if we go over to where our unit circle that we talked about earlier, right, tangent of 3 fourths, and so tangent is 3 fourths, so tangent can be either in quadrant 1 or quadrant 3, but we know sine is greater than 1, so we know we're in quadrant 1, so therefore we know that this thing is going to be positive, so we're just going to erase that <coughs> negative, so secant theta equals 5 fourths, and our sine theta is going to be either or cosine theta, excuse me, cosine theta is going to be the reciprocal of secant, so cosine theta is four-fifths. And so that's going to be one of our two answers. Next, we need to find our sine theta. And to find sine theta, we have some choices at this point. We can come back here and use our first Pythagorean identity. That wouldn't be too bad. But we're going to use what we start out with, and this is this tangent theta. I'm going to bring this here in uh, purple, okay? So tangent theta equals 3 fourths. And we know that uh, tangent is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. I remember that? And we happen to know what cosine theta is because we just figured it out right here in this boxed in already. So, so 3 fourths is equal to sine theta, which we haven't found out yet, over cosine theta, which we have found out. It's going to be 4 fifths. And solving this equation, if we multiply both sides of this equation by 4 fifths, it's like cross multiplying 4 fifths. So sine theta is going to be equal to 3 fourths times what we multiplied both sides by, which is 4 fifths. And just multiplying straight across, 3 times 4 is 12, divided by 4 times 5 is 20. And if we simplify 12 over 20, we can simplify to 6 over 10, which simplifies there further to 3 fifths. So sine theta is equal to 3 fifths. Okay, which we could have found using that first Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. But here we are. And those are our answers. Let's go on to problem number three. Okay, problem number three. We have find tangent theta and cotangent theta if secant theta equals four and sine theta is less than zero. And so going back to our unit circle, sine theta is less than zero. So we're talking about here in quadrant quadrants three and four, aren't we? That's what we're looking for in problem three. And we're given this 
uh, we're given secant theta equals 4, and we're trying to find tangent theta, so really this identity we used previously is really tailor-made for this problem as well. And so I'm going to write this out. 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And we know that secant theta is 4, so we'll say 1 plus tangent squared theta equals secant squared theta, which is 4 squared, which is going to be equal to 16. And if we subtract 1 from both sides of this equation, right, we have a cancellation here. <clears throat> we know that tangent squared theta is equal to 15. And now taking the square root of both sides of this equation, we're going to have tangent theta is equal to plus or minus square root of 15. Okay, and to find out what's going to be, we know tangent theta is less than zero, uh, excuse me, secant theta is 4. Well, if secant theta is 4, therefore uh, cosine theta is going to equal to 1 fourth. So we have a cosine positive. We have sine is less than 0, so going back to our unit circle, that means that we have cosine over here, right? Cosine positive, but sine is less than zero. So our tangent is going to be negative. So therefore, we can go back here and we can cross out this positive. We know that the tangent of theta is going to be equal to not positive square root of 15, but negative square root of 15. So that's our tangent value. Okay, and now our cotangent our cotangent theta equals 1 over tangent theta. In this case, we have cotangent theta is it going to be equal to 1 over negative square root of 15. And we can write this as cotangent theta. We'll bring this negative sign out in the numerator, negative 1 over square root of 15, and if we rationalize this denominator to get our square roots radicals out of this denominator, multiplying the numerator and the denominator by square root of 15, we're going to get negative square root of 15 in the numerator, and square root of 15 times square root of 15 in the denominator will give us 15. So there we have problem three worked out. Anyway, these are interesting problems. Uh, it takes a little bit of work. I hope this has been helpful to you. And I thank you for viewing.